really close, okay? <laughs> this is the way. Mexico, Guatemala, and then Honduras. I'm really happy to be here. Thank you so much for, for the invitation. Thank you, thank you, Randy and Brownie. And personally, I feel like I'm home. Amen. To see you all and you have been praying for me and my family. And I know. And I'm really grateful. Thank you so much for your support. Thank you so much for your love. And thank you so much for your prayers for me and my family. You know it's been it's been a difficult time in in Honduras. San Pedro Sula. But the Lord has been with us all the time. Before I go to, to the message, because of course I'm, I'm going to preach about God's purposes in our lives, I want to introduce my, my family. So, where go next? Tito. There you go. Okay, thank you so much. Um, my name is Jose Walter, for those of you who don't know me, and I'm a missionary in Honduras. I've been, I've been there for five years and some months now. And this is my wife, Felicita. She's the best of the best. And um, we have been married for, next year it will be 25 years. So it's, it's a good day. Because of my wife. And we have two kids. Okay? And again, right here. Maho, she's 22 years old. Um, and she's at the college right now, university. And Danny, he's uh, 17 and he looks like me. <laughs> <laughs> and my daughter looks like my wife. So it's even okay, I wanted the third one, but Pesita said no. So, <laughs> we only have two children, okay? So I have uh, two children, one wife. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Pesita says hello, and the church in San Pedro Sula says hello. You know, in 2023, it's been a blessing in San Pedro Sula. We have had, of course, difficult times. But it's been a blessing. We started in 2023 with um, um, the anniversary of the church, fifth anniversary. Okay, uh, here's the youth group, some members of the church, and I have some pictures here. Um, members of the church, church, special people. Then we have, of course, here's me and my kids celebrating. Then we have baptisms at the beginning of the year. Okay, people taking decisions for the Lord. Oh, okay. So where should I point? Oh, right here. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. Uh, people taking decisions for the Lord. Okay. More people, special brothers. So anniversary at the beginning of the year, then baptisms, and then we had um, our first mission trip in March. So this is the church. This is the first mission trip with brothers from, from the United States in Good News in Action. Okay? Right here. And of course we had a second mission trip just recently in August, led by Randy and a group of very special brothers. And I see some of them right here, you know, uh, Kearney is here, uh, Royer is here, Maddox of course was with us. Um, let me see who else is here. Brandon and Tessa. Brandon and Tessa of course. Steve. Uh, Steve, <laughs> Steve, yeah. It was very good, very good. And you can see some of them are here. Oh, Marty, is Marty here? Oh, Marty. 
party, yes, okay. Um, very special time, you know, preaching the gospel. And of course, we had Maddox with us for five weeks, and he's alive, okay? <laughs> Morgan, I officially give you your song. <laughs> Nothing happened in Honduras, okay? Nothing happened. Today, we're going to study the first letter of Peter. And of course, the letter of Peter speaks about difficult times in our lives. And of course, we have had a very difficult time in Honduras. Please continue praying for Larry and Morgan and their family, and my family as well, and my church. This message is about trusting God eternal purpose. Let's go to Peter chapter 5 verse 10. I would like to start saying that in life sometimes circumstances are very difficult. These circumstances come as crises, adversities, and suffering. When this happens, when crises come, when adversities come, when very difficult situations come, doubts come to our minds, discouragement, and then we start asking questions. Why is this happening? Why is happening to me? Sometimes there's a desire to give up. Let me tell you that the same thing happened to those who suffered persecutions in the times of Peter. So Peter wrote this letter in order to challenge Christians to move forward despite circumstances. Suffering is part of life. First Peter chapter two says, for this is thank thankworthy if a man for conscious toward God endure Grief, suffering wrongfully. It also says in 1 Peter 2.20, But if when you do well and suffer for it, you take it patiently, this is acceptable with God. And in 1 Peter 2.21, it says, For even here unto where you call, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that you should follow his steps. Suffering is part of life. Suffering comes in the way of crisis, adversity, <coughs> difficult situation that sometimes we cannot manage. It's really hard. But then, Peter understood that this was happening to Christians in this time. So he, he writes the letter and he sends it to the Christians to give courage so they understand. And it, it says, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 10, it says, But the God of all grace, who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after, yet, after that you have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, and strengthen, and settle you. God of all grace, who has called us unto his eternal glory, God 
has prepared a wonderful destiny for you. My dear brothers, at the end, everything is going to end well for us. Even if situations are hard, circumstances are difficult, we know everything is going to end well for us. But before thinking about our destiny, it says, God of all grace. We need to understand grace. What is grace? And Randy said this would not be a preaching, but a teaching. So I can ask questions. So I will ask questions. Okay? What is grace? Let me know. What's grace in simple words? Not, not you yet. Not you. <laughs> okay. What's grace? Okay. Exactly. Unmerited favor. What else is grace? Decide. What else is grace? Bobby, what is grace? He in earnest. Exactly. He said here. Gift from the Lord. Grace. Yes. God's riches at Christ's expense. Exactly. Grace is everything for a Christian. It's a gift from the Lord. You know, in His grace, God offers forgiveness. Do we deserve forgiveness? No. It's His grace. He offers reconciliation and peace. He offers abundant life eternal treasures, His Holy Spirit, all grace, and a place in heaven with Him someday. <coughs> Do we deserve this? No. Let me suggest that the greatest blessings in life come from grace. Peace, forgiveness, Reconciliation, abundant life, a good life, eternal treasures, and a place with Him in heaven. So Peter reminds Christians, we are going to end up well because of His grace. He is good with us. Instead of punishing us, God offered us a place in heaven. Now the question is, what will heaven be like? What do you think when you hear heaven? And I, I will give you this. Could you please pass the because it's not working. It's not working? No. <laughs> Questions again. What will heaven be like? What do you think? When heaven, when you hear heaven, this table, what do you think? Heaven. How do you imagine heaven? The greatest creation of God. Exactly. The greatest place. Well, we don't know anything about it. Anything. We, could, we can just imagine. Exactly. What else in this table? How, how, what do you think about when you hear heaven? What's your first thought? Jesus. Oh, of course, Jesus will be there. And we will hold him and thank him. His presence, his love, his, his eyes, of course. What else? H.P. Watson, right? What do you think, heaven? I think it's going to be far beyond our imagination and much better than we can even imagine. Exactly. Exactly. You know Psalms. Psalm 19 1 says, The heavens declare the glory of God. The firmament showed his handiwork. God explains something we cannot understand 
by looking at something we can see. Heaven and firmament. You know, when I was coming from San Pedro Sula to Kansas City, I was in the airplane and I took a picture of heaven. I took a picture of heaven. <laughs> I took a picture of heaven. <laughs> yes, yeah. You see, something happened. It's beautiful. The dimension is big. That's the glory of God, big. The peace. sentence 
to be ever in sight and which should be true and appropriate in all times and situations. They presented him the words, and these two shall pass away. How much it expresses, how chastening in the hours of pride, how consoling in the depths of affliction. And it's attributed to Abraham Lincoln. These, these, should, these two shall pass away. Our difficult times shall pass. Every situation, it shall pass. We be short. But also says, but the God of all grace, who has called us unto, unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a while, make you perfect. Who will make you perfect? Who? God. It's intentional. God uses crisis, difficult situations with purpose in our life. Before seeing what God does, we must note that it is God who does it. The God of grace, same God, make you. Psalm 66 says, For though, O God, has proved us, though has tried us, as silver is tried, though brought us us into the net, though laid affliction upon our loins, though has caused men to ride over our heads. We went through fire and through water, but thou broughtest us out into a wealthy place. God is intentional, and he will take you for difficult situations for a purpose. Short, but intentional. It's also planned. It's part of God's plan to go through difficult situations. Do you remember when you were a kid? You were running, and for some reason you fell, and then you, you know, stand up again and clear your your knees. It happened for. You learn from that. It's the same thing with God. Difficult situations come with a purpose and is part of God's plan. For what? To make you perfect. And some people will say, oh, God wants me to make me more perfect. I'm already perfect, but more perfect. No, 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 no. That's not the idea. The idea is to repair something that due to use has been damaged, spoiled. In Matthew chapter 4, he uses the same word. And also in Luke chapter 5, mending the nets. It's something that is broken, damaged. And it will be repaired. Okay? So how many of you here are married and your wife is with you? Okay? Okay. This is, this is the clear explanation. Morgan, I will ask Morgan. <laughs> is Andy beautiful? Yes. Yes. <laughs> okay. Beautiful. Of course. Okay. 
Is he beautiful when, when he treats you bad? No. No, he's not. When did he dress you bad? Exactly the same thing happens with God. We are broken because of our sin, because of our, our faults, and we need to be repaired. And God is going to use difficult situations to repair our personality. There are many areas in our personality that need to be fixed. All of us need to be fixed by the Lord. He wants you to be perfect, to be repaired, to be patched, mended. But we need to go through crisis, adversities, persecution, pain, and suffering to be repaired. And it is not only a work in us, but a work so that we may be useful. God is going to work in our lives so we can be useful for Him, not not just to be perfect. It's the purpose is to make you useful. Hebrews 13 says, Now the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that, that great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work. For what? to do his will. He will make you perfect in every good work to do his will, to, to make you equipped, prepared, qualified, suitable, and able. God is working through crisis, adversities, difficult situations to make you enable. He wants to perfect your personality, work on your faults, in your sins that make you ugly, like every one of us, like Andy <laughs> or Randy, when they do not behave. <laughs> when they behave, they are beautiful. God wants to make you perfect, but also God wants to Astonish you. In the patching process, the first thing that must happen is to have a fixed direction. We need direction. We need a goal. What's the goal? What's the goal of that table where Brandon and Tessa? What's the goal of a Christian? Did I hear something here? To become more like Christ. Christ. Amen. Christ is our goal. Difficult situations is to give you a direction and be more like Christ. Ephesians chapter 4 says, Till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect Man, and to the measure of the stature of fullness of Christ. In this process, God wants to prepare your personality, your faults, your sins. Then He will give you direction to be like Christ, established. God can make us go go through suffering so that Jesus can be formed in us. God does not want you to suffer, to learn to suffer. That is not the purpose. The purpose is to form Jesus in you. That your personality is getting closer to Jesus in love, in service, in faith, in patience. Difficult.
difficult situations will come to your life so Jesus can be formed in you. Then the Bible says, make you perfect, then establish. Number three, strengthen. Okay. Probably this is the most difficult part of the process. To make you stronger. And he's talking about the, I, I don't know how to pronounce this, biker, bigger? Bigger. He's talk, talking about, thank you, about the bigger physical, emotional, and spiritual that we need to grow. You know, the muscles, they get stronger when lifting weight. Often enough, long enough, heavy enough. We need heavy in our life. Heavy weight. The good thing is that we are not alone. God is strengthening us. God makes you stronger. But he will put you in situations, in adversities, crises, pain, suffering, so he can make you stronger and give you the strength. Do you see God's purpose? Difficult situations come to your life. But God wants to repair your personality, make you perfect. Then he will give you a direction to be like Jesus. Number three, he will make you stronger, putting some weight. And he will give you the strength. And it's a really hard process. And finally, to settle you. Our lives need mending in the areas where Jesus has not been the foundation. To settle is to lay foundation. Sometimes we take decisions outside of the foundation. When we do so, our consequences are terrible, painful. First Corinthians says, chapter 3, 11 says, For other foundation cannot men lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. If, if our foundation for our decisions in life is not Jesus, God will put you in situations where you are laid in Jesus. Our foundation is Jesus. So the process looks like this. God himself, in his grace, we use the suffering to mend. We use the suffering to mend what you have ruined. We put you on the path to be like Jesus. We give you the strength when you think you can go on anymore. And we lay the only foundation on which to stand. Because he has called you to his glory. When you think about heaven, it's beautiful, but God will prepare you to take you to heaven, and he will use difficult situations to make you grow, to mature, to make you perfect, give you direction, to lay the foundation, the correct foundation. And of course, verse 11 says, To him be glory and dominion forever and ever in him. Of course, of course, what should we say when God works in us in that way? God, thank you. To be in difficult situations, it's not easy. 
It's hard. But when you understand God's eternal purpose, you're grateful. Because God is doing something in your life. Yeah. Something that could not be done without the difficult situation. To Him be the glory. When we get to heaven, we will say thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the difficult situation. Because you work on my personal place. <laughs> in my strength, in my life, in my foundation. And I understood because of the crisis, because of the difficult situation. Thank you. To Him be glory, dominion forever and ever. Let's pray. Father God, thank you. Thank you for your word. Because it's clear. Because you speak to us, to our hearts. Thank you because it's the truth. Lord, we want to be like your son Jesus. Even it's a difficult process. Father, prepare we can't let everybody out our personality can you do a Q &A or that has been broken because of sin and faults. Give us direction in life. circumstances and I mean we all know at the, at the end of our, our trip to Honduras you know what happened Patty got sick um, he was there he he was he was there for uh, for Patty he was there for Larry and for Morgan sorry He ministered to them like that each and every day while they were there. And at a time like that, when you lose someone, you need your pastor. And they were in Honduras. But yeah, I told that story about Morgan uh, calling me in, in, in May. And it's amazing to, to see how God used that man right there to minister to Morgan. I'm sorry, your name's Maddox. Uh, you're beautiful, okay? Um, <laughs> to minister to Maddox for five weeks before the team got there. And then Patty uh, got there with the rest of us. And um, a lot of you guys don't know, but Patty was a part of, we have a missionary prayer team that meets on that half of this room um, every Sunday morning at 8 o'clock. And Patty was a part of that, that prayer team. And, um, you know, after we, we took on Jose and the work in Honduras, um, I, what I do is I just assign the different missionaries out to individuals and they contact them about once a month for specific prayer requests. So we're not just saying God bless the missionaries, okay? We have specific prayer requests that 
that we pray for. And I said, Patty, you're assigned to Jose and Pay Walter. And so she had already established a relationship with Jose and Pay long before she went on, on the trip to Honduras. Um, but so he ministered to her for a week, we went out for coffee the, uh, the last night we were there. And, and then of course he, he ministered to, to Larry and Morgan from the time that they were there. So Jose, you know, take the time this week to, to really come on out. Okay. Uh, of course to, this afternoon is, is the, uh, the visitation and the, the celebration of life. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to celebrate, uh, her life tonight. Um, and then each night, I know it's early, okay, but each night, 5.30, out in the coffee house, uh, we will have um, dessert at 5.30. Uh, you know, I don't know, okay. Um, our pastor, you know, okay, I won't say anything else. Okay. Uh, 5.30, we're going to have dessert, um, but tomorrow night, Jose will be talking about Honduras and, you know, the last almost six years that he's been there, what God has accomplished, what God has done in, in their church. So come on out for that. Tuesday night at 5.30 in the coffee house, we will have uh, David Guadron from, um, I always want to say Bogota, because he spent the last uh, nine years in Bogota, okay? So those of you that don't know uh, David, he's been here before. Uh, I've known David for probably 20 years. He was the youth pastor at Vida Nueva in El Salvador. Um, and so he went from that to, he went as a missionary to uh, Bogota. And uh, now he is back in, in El Salvador, basically going through an internship and he is going to be the Julio, okay? And then Wednesday night, Wednesday night's gonna be great. I know a few of you have heard here and there a little bit about Maddox and his internship and what he did. He's gonna give all the dirt, okay, on, on Wednesday. <laughs> so if you want any dirt on Jose, be there Wednesday night for that, okay? All right, so we've got a couple of minutes because I can't let you guys go because you know it's a little bit early yet. So uh, does anybody have any questions they might have for Jose and for the work that he's doing there? I just yes. want to know where he's from. Where he's from? Well, I can tell you that, but go ahead. Where are you from? I was born and raised in El Salvador. I'm originally from El Salvador, but I'm a missionary now in San Pedro Sula with my wife and my kids. We're all from El Salvador and we love pupusas. Randy was in my house like for two days. My wife taught him to make pupusas. That's Salvadorian typical food. It's tortillas and yeah. like cheese inside. And you make them with your hands. So. I actually had oh, frozen yeah, we had chocolate. <laughs> yeah, chocolate pupusas is Randy's invention. So. <laughs>
1994. And he said, well, say, I need to talk to you. And I said, if you're going to talk about the church, I want to know about it. You know, my, my hobby was playing the drums for a metal rock band. <laughs> <laughs> and I used to, you know, have like long hair, like very skinny jeans, <laughs> like ripped, all in black. And um, Alex, he played the guitar. So he, he was with me the same thing. And I played the drums, but he quit. And he started following Jesus. I noticed, you know, the change. So he came to my house and, and said, I don't want to know about that. And he said, please, let me, let me explain. Let me just listen to me. And, and as he was my friend, I listened. The Bible says that when we don't know Jesus, we're blind. I was blind. And I could not understand. Maybe he explained many times. But that day, I understood. He said, Jose, you need to understand you're a sinner. Are you a sinner? And I said, yes, we are, we, we are all sinners. Yes, but this has to do with you and, and Jesus. Jesus died for you on the cross. You know, and it's exactly like the Bible says, it's light in the darkness. That's the gospel. People don't know. People are blind. People are in darkness. Everywhere in the world. That's why we do missions. To share the light. To share the good news. A message of peace. Love. And I understood. And I said, okay, I'm a sinner. And he said, Jesus died for you your sins. And then he continued explaining and I was slowly understanding until he said, do you want to receive Jesus in your heart? And I said, yes. And he led me in a prayer and I followed. But when he stopped, I continued. And I said, Lord, forgive me. And I was sincere because I knew that I was damaged and broken and needed repair. My relationship with my wife, with now my wife, started to go, of course, in the different directions. I started to follow Jesus. I, my life changed a lot. My words, my behavior, and the things I did. So I talked to my parents and I said, Dad, Mom, I need to talk to you. Oh, about the church again? No, not the church. No, I said, no, not church. It's about Jesus. It's about the cross. Yeah. The blood, the resurrection. And then I talked to my wife. In that moment, my girlfriend, Faisita. I said, Faisita, I need to talk to you. And you know, my grandmother, she was like, ah, Jose is going to a Evangelical church. Forget about Jose. He will not marry you. They marry with the people from the same church. And Pesita said, it's okay. He can marry whoever he wants. <laughs> and, and then I shared the gospel with Pei. 
she received Christ. And then we started again to go together in the same way. Amen. And my dad received Christ. Amen. And my mom. And my brothers. Amen. My sister in law. And even my grandmother. <laughs> Because you are important, and uh, so it, it's a neat story. I mean, just sit down and talk to him, talk with him sometime. He told me that two years ago, uh, the first time uh, that, uh, and he told the short version of, of how she came she came to Christ. Uh, sit down and talk with him. He's just really um, very personable and, and a guy that you really can come to love. Okay, let's. I know we prayed. Let's pray again, and then we'll dismiss you to the service. Father God. Again, we thank you so much for this day, Lord. We thank you for uh, the message that, that you laid upon um, Jose's heart to bring to us, Lord God, and that troubles will come, um, difficult times will come. That's part of um, being a Christian, Lord God, and it, it's what grows us in our lives, Lord. When we go through those difficult times, those trials, it, it, it teaches us, Lord God, to depend more upon you. And so, God, I thank you for, for what um, you've laid upon our, on his heart to share with us today, Lord God. God, I pray that you will just dismiss us this morning uh, with, your, with your blessings. I pray for um, the service to come with uh, David as he opens up your word as well. God, I pray that you'll just use this week, Lord God, to draw us closer to you so that we might be more like you, Lord God. Again, we love you. Thank you for this time. And then we pray. Amen. Amen.